Hey guys, my name is Sam and today we're looking at the 2020 Ordinary Level Maths Paper 1 Question 8. So in this question, we're going to be using some algebra and some calculus to solve a real world problem about swimmers. So let's get right into the video. So this is an algebra and calculus question worth 55 marks. So it says a swimmer is on a starting block at the beginning of a race. And when she dives off the block until she resurfaces, the level of the swimmer relative to the level of the water is given by the function h of x. In the function, x is the horizontal distance in meters of the swimmer from the block where x is between 0 and 12 and x is a real number and h of x is measured in meters. So in part a, we're being asked to find the height of the block above the water. So we know that the function h of x tells us how far away the swimmer is from the water level, with x being the horizontal distance from the swimmer to the block. So to find out the distance from the block to the water, we must simply calculate the distance from the swimmer to the water when the swimmer is standing on the block. We know that the swimmer is zero meters from the block when she is standing on it, so we can simply put x equals zero into our function h of x to find our answer. So let's do that now. So we've inputted zero into our function, and all the terms which have a zero in it will just equal zero. And so what we're left with is just a three over five. So our answer is three over five meters. So this will give us full marks for this question, which is five marks. So moving on to part B, part I, it says, show that the swimmer is on the surface of the water, i.e. h of x is equal to zero, when she is 12 meters from the starting block. So to answer this question, we simply input x is equal to 12 into our function h of x. So let's do this now. So we can now use our calculator to evaluate h of 12. So we can do 1 over 60 times 12 squared minus 1 over 4 times 12 plus 3 over 5. And as you can see, this will equal 0. So as we can see, h of 12 is equal to 0, which is the result we are looking for. And thus, we have answered the question. That will give us full marks for this question, which is 5 marks. Moving on to part ii, it says, find the horizontal distance in meters from the starting block to the point where the swimmer enters the water. So we already know that the swimmer is on the surface of the water when she is 12 meters from the block, as we've just seen that in the previous question. However, as the swimmer must enter the water at one point and resurface at another, there is actually two values of x that will give us h of x is equal to 0. To find these, we must solve the quadratic function h of x. So first, we must let our function h of x equal 0. Now, to make this easier to solve, we must multiply both sides by 60, so our x squared coefficient is equal to 1. So we have x squared minus 15x plus 36 is equal to 0. Now, we must factorize this expression. We know that when x is equal to 12, h of x is 0, so x minus 12 is a factor. Now, we must find our other factor. As 1 is our x squared coefficient, we know we're just going to have x here. We now must see what negative 12 must be multiplied by to get 36, as 36 is our constant in the function. Using our calculator, by dividing 36 by negative 12, we can see the answer we're looking for is negative 3. And so now we have found our other factor. From here, we can see that x is equal to 3 is a solution. And so this must mean the swimmer enters the water when she is 3 meters from the starting block. So this is our answer. And as always, it is really important to remember our units as you will not get full marks. And full marks for this question is 10 marks. Moving on to part C, part I, it says find h prime of x, the derivative of h of x. So as h of x is a polynomial, let's remind ourselves of the rules of derivatives in regards to polynomials. So here on the right, we see if our function is equal to x to the power of n, the derivative of that function is going to be equal to n times x to the power of n minus 1. So let's apply this rule to our polynomial. So looking at this first term here, we have 1 over 60 x squared. So our power or our n is equal to 2. So what a derivative is going to be, it's going to be 2 times 1 over 60 or 1 over 30 times x to the power of 2 minus 1 or just times x. Moving on to the second term, negative 1 over 4x. We know that the derivative of x is simply just 1. So we know the derivative of negative 1 over 4 of x is simply just negative 1 over 4. And finally, you can see that we have this constant here, 3 over 5. And we know that the derivative of any constant or any number on itself is just 0. So we now have completed our derivative and we have answered the question. So finding this answer will give us full marks for this question, which is 5 marks. Moving on to part ii, it says use your answer to part c, part i to find the horizontal distance, or x, in meters from the starting block to the point at which the simmer reaches her greatest depth. So firstly, we must visualize what the simmer's dive looks like so we can see where she is at her greatest depth. So if this is the water level and this is the starting block, as her distance from the water is modeled using a quadratic equation, her dive will look like this. So here we can see that at the bottom of the curve is where she's at her greatest depth under the water. 
We know from calculus that when we let the derivative of a function equal zero and solve for x, this is the value of the function that gives the minimum or maximum output of that function. So now let's let our derivative from part c, part ii, equal zero and solve for x. So from here, let's add both sides by one over four. And now to solve for x, let's multiply both sides by 30. So now we have solve for x, which is 30 over four or 15 over two. And this is our answer. So it is always really important to remember the units and this will give us full marks for this question, which is five marks. Moving on to part C, III, it says, hence find this greatest depth. So to find her greatest depth, we just put the, in the value of X from part II into our function H of X. So let's do this now. So here I'll input it 7.5 into our function. And that's because 15 over two in decimal form is just 7.5. And when we evaluate this at 7.5, this is simply equal to negative 27 over 80. So as we have a negative number here, that simply means that she is under the water. And so we know her greatest depth is 27 over 80 meters. So this is the answer to our question. And this will give us the full five marks for this question. Moving on to part D, it says in the 2016 Summer Olympics, Michael Phelps won the 200 meter butterfly in a time of one minute and 53.36 seconds. The time it took to swim each of the four 50 meters sections of the race is given in the table below. The percentage increase in the time taken to swim one section is also given. So we can see in the table that the percentage increase from the second split to the first split is 14.7%. So moving on to part I, we're being asked to complete the table by finding the percentage increase in split time by comparing each split time with the previous one. So the first one we're looking for is looking for the percentage increase in time between the third and second split. So firstly, we must find the difference in time in these two splits. So as you can see, I've done that by doing 29.33 minus 28.5. Now to find this increase in time as a percentage of the split, what we have to do is simply divide by 28.5. Now to get this as a percentage, we must multiply by 100. Using your calculator, you will find this will give us 2.9%. So now we must input that into our table. So now we're gonna do the exact same thing with the third and fourth split. So firstly, let's find the difference in time. And again, we're gonna divide by the time of the third split. And just as before, to find it as a percentage, we're gonna multiply by 100. And this will give us our answer of an increase of 4.6%. And as before, we're gonna input this into our table to answer our question. So finding these two answers will give us the full 10 marks for this question. Moving on to part II, it reads, another swimmer in the race completed the first 50 meters in a time of 25.01 seconds and the subsequent 50 meter split times increased at the same rates at each of Michael Phelps times. So using the table below or otherwise, find the difference between his finishing time and that of Michael Phelps. So as his percentage increase in times were the same, we can fill in our percentage increase times. So as his percentage increase in times were the same as Michael Phelps, we can fill in the percentage increases we found in part before. So now we must find out how long it took him to swim the second split. So how we're going to do this is we're going to multiply 25.01 by 114.7%. So as the percentage increase in time was 14.7%, if we multiply 25.01 by 14.7%, we'd simply find the increase in time. So the reason we have to multiply by 114.7% is because we want the 100% of 25.01 plus the 14% increase. So doing this, correct to two decimal places, we'll get a time of 28.69 seconds. We can now do this exact same process with our second split time now. And this time, as our percentage increase was 2.9%, we're going to multiply by 102.9%. And this will give us an answer of 29.52 seconds. Once again, we're going to do the exact same thing as before with this third split. And this time we're going to be multiplying by 104.6%. This will give us an answer of 30.88 seconds. So this will give us a time of 30.88 seconds. And we can also fill that into our table. So looking back up at the table and adding our four split times together, we'll find that the race took this swimmer one minute and 54.1 seconds. So as you can see here, I've just reminded ourselves of how long Phelps and the new swimmer took to swim the race. So how we're going to find the difference in these two times is we're simply going to subtract one from the other. And doing this will give us an answer of 0 0.74 seconds. So to finish off the question, we'll just write that down in our answer box at the bottom. So this will give us full marks for this question, which is 10 marks. So I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope I was able to show you guys how to use algebra and calculus to solve a real world problem. So I hope you're having a really nice day and I'll see you guys soon.